So Manor Lords has been delayed. Instead of releasing in 2023, which is what everyone has been told, of course, for the last few months, it will be launching in 2024 on the 26th of April. And I have to say, it is a bit disappointing. I mean, you want the best for the game. It is indie developed, so setbacks are probably more expected than usual, but it just sucks that Slavic Magic has been talking about releasing the game this year for so long now, only to announce officially that release is delayed until April of next year. Disappointment aside though, I think many people will agree that we just gotta let him cook. He's done some brilliant work so far, the demo was really impressive, buggy but impressive, and alongside this announcement we have a trailer which I think is a lot more revealing about the reasons why, perhaps, than most have let on. And this is what I want to do today. In this video we're going to discuss the delay of the launch, the content of this announcement trailer, and why, at the end of the day, I think this decision to push Back the launch is probably going to be a great thing. Now we all know that for the last six months to a year, Slavic Magic has had an external QA team. He's had dozens of beta testing volunteers as well from the Discord community, and they've all been quality and bug testing probably the resource gathering and city development side of the game. Until now, we've pretty much seen nothing new about the warfare side of Manor Lords. We've only seen snippets of work, historical research, and some gameplay images of military units, equipment, etc. But I think what this trailer shows first and foremost is that Manor Lords will be launching in April 2024 with Medieval Warfare. I'm guessing that what's happened here is Manor Lords was planned to launch in 2023 only with the city building side of the game. With plenty of testing done already, lots of this is already done and if they wanted they could probably launch this in the next month or so. Plenty of commenters in my past videos have been internal beta testers saying, you know, I've been on the inside, it looks great, it plays so good right now, don't worry guys, it's coming soon, and with a near radio silence on the warfare aspect, I was expecting a release in November with the heavily improved, tested, and polished city building side first, with warfare to come and an update maybe in the next six months to a year. But what this announcement trailer shows more than anything in my opinion is that they made recently an internal decision to launch the game with the medieval warfare side of the game ready to release. Maybe it's because the publisher Hooded Horse thinks it will sell better if it does have these battles, or because Slavic Magic thinks maybe the city building aspect could use some more polish and work, who knows, but the big difference I see here in this trailer in tone and in what they decided to show off is that Slavic Magic has decided Warfare needs to be a part of the game on launch. I think this also makes sense given the trailer shows Manor Lords will be launching on Xbox Game Pass, so they've clearly secured some additional funding to be able to continue enough development to polish off the city building and throw into the mix the highly anticipated medieval battles as well. Hooded Horse also did an Xbox Partner preview in which they talked a lot about the Warfare side of the game, something I don't imagine they would have done at all if they were not planning on launching it with the game in 6 months. Let's be real though guys, the entire trailer screams medieval battles, most of it is the medieval battles, much more so than ever before in Manor Lords marketing. In the tone of the narrator's voice and script, the visuals and the scenery displayed, there's far more time given to showing how battles will look here than ever before. In fact, let's just give the trailer a quick watch. You have been chosen to govern a land of great peril and promise. It has suffered long from the scourge of banditry, but there is another threat, an illegitimate baron who claims the northern territories as his own. Will you prove yourself worthy of this honor? Or will you perish by the traitor's steel?
so there's a few things I want to talk about here in this trailer. Brilliant trailer. Love what I see here. First off, we've got some hefty looking fire effects. So presumably buildings can be set on fire by archers or by hand from raiding bandits. And I'm guessing local citizens, if there's access to a well nearby, can respond to the threat by extinguishing it. And hopefully, of course, weather effects will have an impact on how this all plays out as well. We can also see a recruitment screen, which by the looks of things, there's a local militia that can be raised with your citizens with the use of 10 different types of equipment. Plus, of course, this icon here shows us there's going to be a hiring of mercenaries mechanics. So good to see a variety of troops the player will be able to recruit. We can see a lot more of this in this unit editing mode as well, which I've kind of seen before, but this looks way more detailed, not just in the visual edits when it comes to coloring, helmet type, etc., but also in terms of tiers of unit professionalism, the types of equipment, weapons, armor, and shields they can use, and being able to upgrade armor as well. And it looks like, I might be wrong, but you do this for each of your kind of militarized citizens who have some battle experience, which is quite cool. So it's even more interesting to see your village fight off bandits, for example, and then spend time and energy investing into individuals who have shown military prowess and experience. We also got a look at some of the troop formations, some battle animations, which all looks really smooth, really, really impressive. From everything we've seen before, the warfare side of the game is definitely inspired by Total War, not in terms of scale, but the mechanics and player engagement with things like getting troops into formation, firing arrows from range, using battle abilities, and of course, eventually, though it's not here just yet, using cavalry to flank around and get behind the enemy. The matched combat animations to me look really nice. There's a kind Kind of natural and realistic feel to it all that I really like and I think in many ways some of these minor details in the latest Total War battles have been kind of lost so I'm really impressed to see them here. The trailer also shows us some nice detailed features we haven't seen before on the city building and management side of things. There's this edict system under policies which have various tiers as well, each providing a different benefit at a certain cost, like here with the tithe edict giving some food to the church for influence in return. There's a more in-depth look at the technology tree, which looks a bit smaller than I expected maybe. I think there's probably room here to expand on the tech tree, and with things like work in progress dotted around everywhere, I I'm sure what we see here is quite early days for it anyway. Plus, we've got a nice look at some beautiful new construction styles and animations for buildings, like the church here, which just looks absolutely stunning. I think you get the idea though that this side of the trailer is a bit more on the background of things compared to medieval warfare and manor lords. What we see here we haven't seen much of before and it feels like it's either been done simply for marketing purposes, which I don't believe, or to genuinely say we're working on having this included at launch, which is not something anyone really expected and if true would be a pretty good reason to delay the launch. Especially as when you look here at this scene, for example, the player in this trailer is shown to be commanding roughly 500 troops with a variety of command abilities and formations, which is definitely starting to go into Total War scale historical battles. Still on the smaller side of things, of course, but if you can get to an army of this size in the April release version of the game, then this could absolutely put a dent into Total War fans who love medieval style warfare. Overall, I get the impression that it is a bit disappointing, of course, to see the game delayed until spring next year, but I think by the looks of things, it's all for good reasons. Plenty of polish hopefully will go into making the city building and management side of the game the very best it can be, and after watching this trailer, I think there's ample reason to believe that Slavic Magic is doubling down on getting the warfare aspect of Manor Lords ready at release as well, which would be an amazing thing. I would hate to see it get delayed again in April because the Warfare side isn't ready yet, but well, we'll see how that goes in 6 months. And that's it for today guys, Manor Lords has an official release date now with the 26th of April 2024. This has basically been me breaking down what I think is quite interesting to see in the announcement trailer, why I think it's been delayed, and what we can hope to see in the release of the game next year. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think about Manor Lords, the release date announcement, and everything here in this video. Subscribe for more Manor Lords content just like this, and thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.